Alright, so according to YouTube now, I am actually live. Welcome to my kitchen. Thank you very much for a thousand subscribers. That's one of the reasons why I want to do this, because a thousand subscribers have felt nice. Treat for you, maybe. Treat for you, maybe not. So this is my kitchen, um, except there's a few differences. One is there's some lighting that you don't really use, and you can't see it's off camera. There's also a laptop in the front. You can kind of see it. I usually don't have the laptop there. It's also a microphone, that's not usual, but this is my recording setup basically, except the camera is usually a lot closer. I had to pull it farther back for doing the actual live so you actually see my full body. So that was some of the things I had to do a little differently here. Um, so why I want to do a live stream? One, well, you get to see kind of in real time how I cook instead of just seeing the snippets that I show edited video. Because, you know, I can edit everything to make it pretty, make it nice, and show you a five-minute video of a dish that might take 35 minutes. Whereas today, we're going to go ahead and go through the whole length it takes to me do a weekend meal. And generally, I try and do on the weekend meal something that will take longer because usually some of the longer dishes have a different taste than the shorter dishes we have. And we like some really long dishes that take a while to cook, especially today's uh, chicken, slow roasted chicken thighs. It's going to have a nice crispy crust, something I can't do with the really short cook time, which I have to do on weeknights because I don't have as much time to cook. So it's nice to do something slow roasted today. Um, so I'm going to kind of show you how it works, how it goes. I have some notes here. Um, start to finish. Oh, also another good thing about doing a live stream is it gives you a chance to ask questions. I do have up here, I can see the, the chat window. I don't see any questions yet, so that's fine. Uh, I can also see if you type in the chat and say hi to me. I'll see that as well. So it's a time where we can actually interact. And if instead you're watching this on the... Um, the VOD instead, you know, you still get a chance to type in comments, and I can read those comments later. You can still watch this even though you missed the live. And if you miss anything, uh, I believe it's up so that you can actually scroll back and go back and rewatch the segment, or if you come in late, you can go back and see the start. And, of course, if you're starting late, you won't hear this in the beginning, but you probably might know how that works, so hopefully you'll see the whole thing live as well. Let me see. I'm hoping, yeah, the mic should be done. I've been testing this many, many, many times. I think I finally got a test that actually works well. So that if you're looking here, it should be a nice, clean view. I mean, from my perspective, it's a very clean view. There aren't any, there might be some lag. There shouldn't be any lag, though, because we found a way to get the internet fast enough down here in the kitchen so that we can actually have a nice, clean stream and nice, um, clean video, because I know we we're trying some, it was like the video was like really low quality, like 360 and really low, but hopefully this should work out very well. Um, so we're gonna start off by basically, I've in my kitchen, how it would start off, I don't have anything out yet because we wanna do this in a way it would be unreal. So one thing that when we're doing a meal, you wanna think about uh, how long it takes every dish to cook. Now that's one thing my mom taught me because I asked her when I was really young, um, you know, how do you get everything done at the right time? Which is, well, you have to start with the dish that takes the longest. You start that one first. And you can kind of write down the dishes you're going to cook, write down how long each dish cooks, how long it takes, and that helps you figure out how long to start the dish. So in this day, um, so we're going to do the chicken thighs. That takes, and I looked it up, about, oh, 45 minutes to an hour, depending on your oven and how long it takes you to prep it. And once we get the chicken thighs started in the oven cooking slowly, it's going to cook slowly over there. Then we're going to switch and start cooking the, what's the second dish? The stuffing. Because that's the second last thing. That takes 40 minutes directly in the oven. So you want to make sure once I get the first one done, I got to get on the second one going. And then from there, there's a third dish that we really like. So biscuits. And that mostly is only a 15, 20 minute cook time in the oven or so. All that dish is gonna happen right here. That mostly happens here because I have to prepare it first and cut it up. Um, so that one comes next. And then if you know it's taking too long, the chicken is you know not really gonna it's gonna be cooked done faster, it'll be paused, it'll be out, and just waiting for the time when I can put it back in. See the second lastly, just a salad because I need a salad on Sunday because that's actually happy healthy daughter's lunch. It's gonna be salad. So I use two. You know, it's not going to be every single day just from Sunday, but I prepare beforehand like, you know, about two or three days worth of lettuce that she can have for the weekend lunch. So let's get started on the chicken. So the way the chicken went, and it's got some constant chicken. Uh, chicken thighs bone in. 
Usually I do two packages of these, but since it's just three of us now at home, I have to cut down how much I cook. Let's sell leftovers. Let's see. With the chicken. Well, I might as well get out both of them because one is going to be used for biscuits and one's going to be used for the chicken. I need to get the black coverings on them too. Yeah, I really like these uh, oven pans. They're really good uh, when I when I got them because I love the black thing here because this is a nonstick coating that I use. I'll put the biscuits directly on here. It also will say, well, for doing the chicken though, it's going to be very greasy. All the reason is going to drop down to the lower layer. So usually on the chicken, instead of using the black covering, I'm going to use the foil. And the foil is where it's going to be. This will save on cleanup and it'll keep the juices easier to clean up. And because we're doing stuffing, I will be pouring some of those chicken thigh juices. We pouring them right into the stuffing. It's my secret. Maybe not a secret, but I came up with it myself because you know our family likes in the bird stuffing much better than out of the bird stuffing. So one of the secrets I thought of, huh? You know, what's the difference? Basically, it's that it's in the bird, and it's just going to cook. And all the juices of the bird is going to be in the stuffing. So what is really the difference between in the bird in the bird stuffing and um, out of the bird stuffing is the juices from the bird. So if I take the juices from the cooked bird that I have outside, and this time it's just going to be thighs, and pour it into the stuffing, even though it's while it's cooking, it'll have that flavor to it. And we really like it that version as well. So this is for the chicken seasoning. I'm gonna need another bowl for the biscuits. So let's get that out right now. That'll be this one. But that'll be for later. And I'll take care of the bowls I'm probably gonna need. I'll put that one aside. All right, so cut out the chicken. Drain all the juices. Now this chicken was not in the free uh, in the refrigerator the entire time. And when you buy from Costco, you get six bags of this bone-in chicken. And so what we do is we um, we separate them and freeze all of them right away because we're probably not going to be cooking the chicken. Usually there's something else I'm going to mock we're going to cook instead. Certainly not going to cook the chicken. I'm going to take each of the chicken pieces and put them in there. Marinating bowl. So usually we use one bag for the three of us. At least it has four thighs, skin on, and bonus. This is a really small one. As for the one my daughter's gonna want, small one. Uh, I know in my recipe, the, oh, I usually use Cozy. I usually use my phone for doing these recipes. I'll reference my phone all the time. I don't have them memorized necessarily. But since I don't have Cozy, I don't have my phone. My phone is my camera. It's right there. Pretty well. So I do not need to um, reference my Cozy on these ones. So then we got my four chicken thighs right there. I'm going to wash my hands. Now we're going to add the seasoning and the oil. Paprika. So I got my salt, my pepper, my garlic powder, my paprika, and the olive oil. Yeah, that's the olive oil. So these are the ingredients that go on the chicken. Now, if you like other spices on your chicken, poultry, you feel free to use those. You don't have to use anything fancy. Mainly, I'm trying to get the nice and um, what I'm looking for uh, crispy crust to the chicken. So this is probably a uh, what am I going to say? That's a tablespoon or so of garlic powder. The garlic powder is really good. And then salt, we're just going to eyeball it. 
A nice one, I have a teaspoon of salt. Okay, I'm trying to see. There, yeah, okay, I'm seeing it. I don't like when I do this recording myself. When I record for myself, the trick is I have to push on my food close to the camera because my camera is pointing down at the counter. But in the live stream, the camera is kind of in a different spot, so it's all about closer to me, means you can see what I'm doing more. And then the paprika. So, how much pepper? Oh, that was about uh, half a tablespoon, teaspoon of pepper, teaspoon of salt. And that was maybe. I don't know, a half a tablespoon of paprika. And I just use my hands to work it all in. The oil and the spices. You know, it gets dirty. It's fine. It's chicken. I'm gonna wash my hands afterwards anyway. Make sure that all the chicken gets all the spices. Oh, there's one thing I forgot. Preheat the oven to 300 degrees. For the slow roasting chicken, I'm gonna preheat the oven to 300 degrees. That's how it's gonna go. We'll get to that as soon as I've coated my chicken and spices. That's a little too coated. Skin on chicken thighs. Uh, so yeah, so you notice that I did use the pepper grinder and the salt grinder. Mainly just mainly just because I have it, it's convenient. Does it really make it taste better? Um, well, I will say fresh ground pepper does tend to taste better if it's not gonna be cooked. Thing is that we're gonna cook both the salt and the pepper. And salt-wise, it's not gonna make any difference. If you're gonna cook salt, you're gonna cook it on here, it's gonna melt, so to speak. It's gonna dissolve. It's gonna move in with the meat as it is. So if you fresh grind your salt, there is no difference from just pouring salt out of a container. So don't worry about whether you have a special salt grinder or pepper grinder for your dishes. Pepper grinder is for if you want pepper after you cook. You add a little pepper for flavor. Then it makes a difference. You can really taste the difference after. But before cooking, I've tested it. Don't really feel like there's much difference before cooking. Get rid of that a little piece of fat. Yeah, so we got the foil underneath. Just gonna put on our four chicken thighs. I'm gonna have to set our oven to 300 degrees while it's preheating. It actually works out well, actually. Get this ready to wash. <laughs> this is one of the things that gets edited out from my videos. It's the amount of time to wash my hands when I'm cooking the food, especially after cooking the chicken. That's the entire time after which I wash my hands. Wash and dry. All right, now that I've dried my hands over here by the oven, we'll go ahead and uh, set the 300 degrees. And go ahead and start. Now the biscuits are gonna cook at 425. And then the stuffing, actually, I think it's supposed to be 400. So it can go in with the biscuits or it can go in with the chicken. The chicken's gonna increase up to 425 after the 350 is done. It's gonna increase. I don't need that, don't need this. And then I'll be for later, put it up front. It's not my chicken just sitting out, it's just gonna wait until the oven gets to 300 because I put it in now. What the oven does is since it's an electric oven, the very top, I found the very top electric coil that heats up the oven, gets really hot. And if you stick it in now, when it's preheating, it's gonna cook as if you're broiling it because it's gonna heat it up really hot at the top. Once it gets to 300, it's going to shut off the top coil and it'll kind of cool down. So you don't want to stick it in while it's preheating. Never do it while preheating. Unless you want to broil your food first. So don't, don't even do it. Uh, let's see, for the stuffing. The onion.
Uh, it's a good onion. And we need some celery. Now I'm going to use products that I love to use. But I'll let you know I am not sponsored. None of these products, these are not sponsored products. They're not sponsored. I'm not sponsored. But from time to time, some of the companies have decided to send me stuff for free. Do we need oil? I'm not gonna need oil anymore. Uh, garlic powder, no. I need salt and peppers. And they send me for free so that I can review them. Because I do reviews on this channel as well. Celery. We got the onion out. Got the celery. Uh, yeah, I left the refrigerator open. Not really good. Let's see how many stocks do I want for this. I'm also going to use celery later in the week. Going to make a nice. Um, we like celery, so let's go with four. There's a very nice. Um, so let's see what we're doing with it. We are making chicken salad. And so, oh, those are small celery stocks. Let's do an extra. I don't need that much for chicken salad. Let's go with this one. There we go. So we'll do a nice chicken salad for that. So we've got our celery here. Let's do the celery first. Doesn't matter. Oh, let's just go ahead and. Uh, so, what I usually do with my trash can at this point, I just leave the lid open because then I'm going to have to use it quite a bit rather than keep opening it for all the celery stems and the onion. So, yeah, today you get to watch me get all the vegetables ready too. And hopefully, you know, listen to me speak. Maybe you don't. Listen to me speak. I'll have to fill the dead air because what? Watch me just peel celery. That's not fun. Let's talk about our kitchen. Let's see our kitchen. So this is our kitchen. Uh, it has this nice, it's not an island. It's connected to everything else. But this is our, our prep table, right? Prep everything. Speaking of which. And we clean it every day. We need to worry about this being put on dirty counter. It's not a dirty countertop. Part of our countertop. It's not an island. Our countertop. Yep. Now we had to actually rebuild our kitchen. Let's see. I need the vegetable one. I need the vegetable one today. We need to rebuild our kitchen. Why? Well, because when we first moved this house, that's not that old house, 89 years built. But the pipes were copper and the copper piping. Was starting to break. That wasn't the problem for this kitchen reconstruction. The problem with the kitchen reconstruction was there was a uh, a drain pipe right over there, right over there from the upstairs uh, bathroom, a drain pipe for the shower. And what we didn't know when we bought the house was that the previous owner that the, it leaked if you use that shower upstairs. It leaked. So we didn't know it, so I was using the shower when I came downstairs. The whole downstairs was completely flooded. Yep. Completely flooded. Because of that drain pipe. Hmm. And because it flooded our downstairs bath, uh, kitchen area, you got all in behind the cabinet work. Because if the pipe was there, it just flooded the down below and had all the cabinet work. So we got the pipe replaced. In the meantime, there was just lots of water in here, hard for it to dry out. So we ended up tearing the whole kitchen out and rebuilding it. They had a different kind of tile then. This is like those little square tiles with the caulking in between. Hated that kind of kitchen kind of. And it looks nice, it looked nice, but it wasn't good for you know, like cleaning very easily or preparing food on. So we had to redo the entire kitchen. We did get some insurance money though because of the leaky pipes. So that was good. 
So it wasn't just out of our pocket, but we didn't need to redo the whole kitchen. And then the insurance company that we had, because we had a claim on them. Well, of course, they didn't say it this way, but we had a claim on them. So what did they do? They wouldn't insure us the next time. I don't remember what insurance company that was. Um, don't remember the name of it. Uh, but yeah, so after we claimed on the, all the flooding from the upstairs pipe, the drain pipe that was flooding out in the kitchen, they decided to, oh, we're not going to allow you to renew with us next year. All right, so for, and so we ended up now switching over to, it wasn't even a big name company. We ended up switching over to Allstate, though. Allstate became our insurance, and actually, no, 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 not Allstate. Farmers, sorry, Farmers are our current insurance, and they, they, they've been a very good insurance company. The other one wasn't so good; it was hard to get a claim and stuff. But yeah, so I, if you have to get insurance, Farmers actually does pay out well, at least in our area. If you have an insurance claim, uh, oh, it's, it's talking about. That's right. So naturally, I'm doing certain things like small pieces of celery, small pieces of onion. Yeah, I could chop it up with a knife, but especially the onion. I really like the uh, full star vegetable chopper. Do it this. Let's see, I want to use my right hand to pound. Yes, this is the right. So I just got to make sure that they are in the right size for that work. Cut these in half. Oh, you know, so yeah, actually I didn't have to cut them down the middle. I like to cut them down the middle. If I was going to slice them, I'd cut them down the middle. But truthfully, I didn't need to because the full store vegetable chopper cuts them down the middle for me anyway. I wasn't thinking about that. Oh, so there we go. Let's see. Cut these in the right shape. So we can't see what I'm doing with the full store vegetable chopper. I'm measuring eyeballing what's going on here. So I'm eyeballing how long they have to be. So that's when I cut with my knife, how long they have to be. With onion, you don't have to measure because it's just the way you have to cut the onion. And once you cut it, that way it's going to fit. For the celery, you kind of have to measure. Yeah, I saw that one was going to hit there. Okay, there we go. So that takes care of my celery chopping. The one thing I like about this full star vegetable chopper is the onion cutting. The onion cutting, the onion chopping. Because I can chop onions, I know how to chop onions, I know the special way to chop onions, how you can do it. Personally, if I don't know how to chop onions, I don't want to chop onions. Cut that here, cut this here, and now peel. Mainly, chop an onion is going to make me cry, and that's not something I want to do. Don't want to cry. Usually, especially the strong onions, red onions are more likely to do that for me than these white onions. Um, sorry, these are yellow onions. Growing up, my mom always used white onions, and I just thought, those were onions, because those are the only onions I ever saw in our home, were the white onions. So I thought those were just, that's what an onion was, white onions. But once I started cooking more for myself, I a grocery store for myself. I now realize that the white onions aren't the only onions, they're yellow onions. And actually, I like the yellow onions better, partly also because they're cheaper. As you know, so we cut the onion in half, I cut the tops off, peeled off the outer layer. Now I have cut them down kind of like in thirds. That way that the flat edges will now fit right onto it. And so when I do it flat this way, you won't have any long french fry pieces. When you cut the onion this way. You can see your onion's small, but it'll always fit. So that's why I didn't have to worry about uh, figuring out if the onion's going to fit or not. Never had onion too big yet. That doesn't fit when I cut it this way. 
do, do, do. So whole onion, chopped, and ready. There we go. Those are the ingredients for the uh, stuffy. Oh, I heard the ding dong for my oven. That means at the right temp, time to put in the chicken. So low and slow we go. Let's go for 45 minutes. 300 degrees, 45 minutes. That should mostly cook the chicken. Not fully. So these are the ingredients that I use for the stuffing. Um, my favorite stuffing is Mrs. Covington's. I don't do stuffing from scratch. That just takes too long. And this works really well, even on Thanksgiving. Uh, so, uh, so this one wants 350 degrees. We're not going to do 350. Because biscuits are 425. So what I'll end up doing probably is doing 425. It won't make that much of a difference in the stuffing. Uh, one thing the stuffing box does is it neat. We got the onion and the celery, just like they said. Um, one thing this thing says is um, if you want a tastier stuffing, a more full stuffing, you can add an egg. I don't need to bother because I got the juices from my chicken coming out. I need a casserole dish. Let me see. Deep, thick stuffing. I just want to try and figure which one I want to do. Thick and deep. Or the long one that we usually use. They'll both work. I mean, the box says 3 by 9 I do have 3 by 9 in here. Let's go to the clear see-through one. This is actually um, nine by sorry. It says thirteen. Nine by thirteen. I don't believe this is nine by thirteen. Yeah, this is not nine by thirteen. But that's okay. That's a couch I'm going to use. So. We need to uh, do the stuffing part first, and then we'll get to the biscuits. Just hmm. depending on whether I'm going to bring you over here. I can bring you a little closer, but I can't bring you full in here. And I, there's a reason why. That has to do with the laptop. Because the camera's connected to the laptop. Hmm. Uh, let's just uh, leave you there for today. Um, but so we're going to take, let's see, a whole. See, again, I'm just going to look at the directions here because that's because I forget all the time. But I kind of, it's going to be two sticks of butter, melt the butter. So we're going to take two sticks of butter, melt them. That's how we'll start. Two sticks of butter. And we're going to Let's see. I'm trying to remember, is this one big enough? I like to be as small as I can. Save space when you're washing dishes later. But I think whole box in there. Ah. Two sticks of uh oh. Oh, the camera was gone for a second. That's interesting. Uh, no, I can't do stream health from here. Huh. Don't know why the camera went off. Okay. Two sticks of butter. Mm. Only have one stick left. All right, so I'll be back after we'll get two sticks of butter.
All right, so I'm back. So uh, what happened was we went out to the other. I keep saying like jittery here. I don't know. So I went back to the other refrigerator. We have the same refrigerator, and well, that's carry gold butter. That's not usually the butter I use, but we were at Costco and got and said, we need butter. I didn't know how much butter we had, didn't know if we needed enough. So went ahead and bought the carry gold. So we'll see how the carry gold is. Good about two, uh, one cup of butter. Eight ounces. Eight ounces of butter. Let's see what is, that just. Uh, I know it's two sticks. One cup. One cup. Two sticks. And this is two sticks of butter. Now, some of you might be thinking. He said he's making biscuits today. And biscuits require butter. Yes, biscuits do require butter. You'd be correct. At least my business, I'm going to use butter, not shortening. They do require butter. But the trick is, I still have some sticks of butter here. I just didn't have two cups. I just didn't have a full cup of butter in here. So I had to go out there and get it. And so if you want to melt the butter more evenly, you can actually chop it up and cut it up. That would melt it more evenly. I'm not doing that today. Am I going to use chicken stock? Yeah, we need chicken stock. Just keep it Oh. Hmm. It's not something else. That's for later. Ah, right, so the butter's about halfway melted. And that's fine. We're just going to toss the ingredients. And we'll cook them over there, stirring them occasionally. Just a little on the blades, not much. So the onion and soy mixture goes in. Mm. Now the best part. Go stink up a whole house with, um, with what is it? Stink up a whole house with uh, caramelized onion flavoring. That's what's for caramelized onion. I really like those wooden, they're actually bamboo or wooden, I'm not sure, wooden utensils for cooking. They're really good. I really like them a lot. I like them better than the, uh, the plastic-ish ones that you see in the back, the red ones, they're plastic. They're nice. They scrape off bowls perfectly, that's their benefit. But they are not as good as the wood ones for cooking. They get too hot, at least when I use them. So I don't always measure, but for some reason, biscuits, I always want to measure. I don't measure for everything I cook, but for biscuits, I certainly do. Biscuits, flour. That's in the flour. Let's go to the reserves. So why do I keep my flour in the refrigerator, you might wonder? Because that way I don't get all those little flour moths everywhere. Yeah, the butter's still melting. Flour moths. I'll be right back. So I need some more flour. This is not two cups of flour. I didn't know it was so low. And I'm going to get another ingredient from the other refrigerator that we need.
There we go. So you ever see those moths floating around in your house? You might check the flower, you might check uh, crackers, they're often found in crackers. And then they come out. Yeah. So to stop that from having rest, we put our flour in the refrigerator. You might also be wondering, how can we have two refrigerators? Well, when we were living in our old house, we had a refrigerator. Moved to a new house, we bought a new refrigerator. Rather than throw away our old refrigerator, we ended up uh, keeping it and just keeping it outside. We found a spot outside for it. I just realized this flower dish is going to put a lot of flour everywhere. So on the Keep the clothes cleanish and goodish. Yeah, it's four o'clock. You might also wonder why I start cooking at 3:30. Well, because the dish takes a while to cook. So hopefully we'll have an early dinner. But I never I'm not gonna know. There's no flour. You also they went and got some milk. Now I've tried soy milk before for biscuits. The only reason I tried the soy milk was because we didn't have any. Regular milk on hand at the time. So I thought, oh, okay, I'll just use some soy milk that we got. I could tell the difference. We all could tell the difference. It just wasn't as good. So two cups of flour. There we go. And back in the fridge, you're ready to go. Yes, butter is all melted. It's starting to caramelize the onions. Caramelize the onions, caramelizing the celery. That's good. So we can continue on the stuff on the biscuits. I need some salt over there. I need baking powder. Sugar, okay, just enough sugar. I know I have some baking powder here somewhere. No, you're new. Where's theirs? No, no new confection flour. Aha! Baking powder. All right, so tail to the baking powder. Ah. I have a new one in there. So I know we're about done with this one. This is, so I don't always measure greens, but for baking, I tend to measure it out. So I just kind of know that like you make a mistake and you're measuring and you're doing baking, then I add. This is one dish that I really know because I've done biscuits so much. I know it's a tablespoon baking soda, tablespoon of sugar. And a teaspoon of salt, two cups of flour, three fourths cups of milk, six tablespoons of butter. That's the whole recipe. Works really well. Tastes really good. Nice and flaky. Well, that's going to say it's even better than um, KFCs. I gotta get that mixed. Oh, I need the salt. And sure, we use some Himalayan sea salt. I'm just gonna estimate, this one might have a change. Okay. Yeah, I'm Little more. Okay. Might be a little more salty than usual, we'll see. Don't need pop cake anymore, let me see. Uh, salad, don't, don't need, don't need. Oh, we're done. The spices. Yeah, I don't need that for stuffing. Only a teaspoon anymore. Okay, so we got this. Need that one still. 
I need to mix it up. Rather than, uh, what's that thing called? Dirty another utensil. I'm just gonna use this spoon, the measuring spoon. Mix it all together. Next will go better. Let's take a look at the onion celery mixture. See how that's doing. So that's all mixed and ready to go. Next stage. I'm gonna turn it down lower. Okay, so I want to low slow cook those uh, onions. Maybe. So that's what it looks like right now. I like to have my onions a little more caramelized than this, so we're going to continue to slow cook it. Maybe another ten. We'll see. Five minutes or so. It just it, it takes some time. Not yeah, so it's better, but this is only one stick. Well, it's interesting, uh, one sticks, but there, if you look at it very closely, you'll notice that it's a long stick of butter. I right, so look, this will be caused for my second washing of hands. Next, let's see. Okay, good. All right, so that's uh, six tablespoons. We'll be right there. Six tablespoons of butter. Oh, here comes a train. So we're gonna have to mark it, make it really small. I usually don't use a teaspoon and tablespoon anymore. We have to make it small, so we're gonna bring out. I always do that. There's one thing I made a mistake. Not a big mistake. Small mistake. For breads are like a flour board. So we're gonna use a flour board. But I made a small mistake. Put the flour away. It was the wrong thing to do. I don't need the flour again. Sometimes a little too meticulous, overzealous in doing this. So now we're just going to take and move the flour aside. We're going to grate the butter. Yes, my hand's going to get messy because the butter's going to melt my hands. Now the uh, recipe I got from said you might freeze the butter first for a little bit. I try with completely frozen butter. Never do that. That was a good idea. I mean, like overnight frozen butter wasn't good. Didn't do this very well when I tried to grate it. Or, like in today's case, straight out of the refrigerator butter. Or you could freeze it for like, you know, when I started the chicken, I could toss the butter in the freezer to get a little more solid, and that would have worked. I've done that before, and it's okay to do it that way. All right, so what I like the grater because it's going to make the butter really small without me making it small. And then I'm going to turn it around a little bit inside the dish. So I'm already coating the butter instead of doing it all at once. Getting the butter coated with flour. Don't worry, I'll go back in. So, oof, crap. Oh, okay, that'll work too. You can get butter on the grater, uh, flour on the grater, doesn't matter. So you can see the grated butter looks really thin. It's really good. Oof. So my mom used to make biscuits. I never cared for mama's biscuits, though. 
Um, well, I was just that. I only liked them when I could put jelly on them. Then they were good. If I put some jelly on the biscuits, I liked it then. We had some homemade pomegranate jelly because grandma had a pomegranate tree and my mom would uh, pick the pomegranates from a pomegranate tree and make homemade pomegranate jelly. I really like that jelly. That was good jelly. Spread it on bread. It was really good. I enjoyed that a lot. And that was the only way I really liked my biscuits with that jelly or, you know, the Knott's boysenberry jelly or just put some kind of jelly on the biscuits. But, you know, I brought my mom to because, you know what, she is. She used Bisquick to make her biscuits. And, you know, I've used Bisquick and I used to use Bisquick all the time. Then I just decided this wasn't that good. So now that's why I use my own biscuit mix. And so if I make pancakes and the and the recipe calls for biscuit mix. I make my own biscuit mix. And do the pancake here, you know, the biscuit mix, the dry part. That's a lot of butter, it's all in my hands. Let's wash that off. Dry off my hands. Give me a good chance to take a look at the uh, at this mixture. Oh. Pretty good, pretty good. All right, so let me first finish off with the biscuit mix before the milk. It's good to coat the butter in the biscuit mix as best you can. And I'm using, well, what is this called? I'm not sure what this is called anymore. I have a couple of these. They're very helpful when you want to cut butter into doughs. And that's really what I've used it for. Like when I made pie dough, I use one of these. Other than that though, I don't use this very much at all. Get all the butter off of this thing. Let's see. There we go. Smash. Now the idea is because that's going to make a whole bunch of small little grains of butter, flour coated butter. That's your goal with biscuits. At least the biscuit mix. That's why the butter. And a whole bunch of really small. That one's too big. Go again. Really small biscuit uh, butter, <laughs> flour coated butter. And that's what you want. Maybe shake it up and see lots of little, little ones in there. So that's good. So we're going to leave that. Now let's take two and let's finish up the uh, stuffing and put it in the oven. Oh. I didn't preheat the oven, so let's preheat the oven to 425 for the biscuits. Lower oven. Now I know if I look on this box, it says you should do 350. It, 20, 75 degrees is not going to be that much Because I'm going to cover it in foil. And that'll be the main thing. So it's covered in foil. All right, so let's continue now. Let's bring out. So now that this part is done, now that I successfully caramelized the onions in the butter. Yeah, that's good. We can go ahead and put in the stuffing mix. We're gonna have to put in some chicken broth. That's what I got this thing out here for. I was supposed to need oh one one and a half cups. Let's see if I have enough. If not, back outside again. Uh, let's 
Let's see, we got one and a half cups of this. It feels like it. We'll see. One. Oh, it's just the right. A little more than one and a half. That'll be fine. That would have to put a little bit back into it. So one thing I do like to do, and everyone kind of does, I like to break down the boxes. Okay, space. Okay. So, so we need this, but first, breadcrumbs. Stuff, and I'm gonna stir while I dump. That way, one part is gonna total all the butter, and the other part doesn't. So I kind of want the whole thing get as much of the butter as I can. Yeah, I was. I did need to use the big one, didn't I? I could have probably gone with the smaller one, but all right. So we dumped it in. There you go. Now, we're spraying them all around. Trying to get everything coated in that wonderful onion celery butter. That's the whole goal here. But you can tell some of the stuffing got more butter than other stuff. So that's why you want to use the stock to try and even that out. A bit. So this is where you can add the one egg for a richer stuffing, according to Mrs. Kevinson. First, I say no, no, no egg in my stuff, and that is stuffing from the box. Mrs. Kevinson's. We've tried the stove top stuffing. This is Covington's is way ahead of that one. So much better than that. I'm just gonna double check. It feels okay, yeah. Good and, good and soggy. Good, good, good. Chicken broth or water. Could have added water instead. Could add an egg or a richer, thicker stuffing. And that makes sense. Totally makes sense. But And you can see it's nice and nice and beautiful and lovely. Smells good. Smells like stuffing. Oh, little uh, rogue pieces there. Put them back in. All right, next thing we need to do uh, spray. Did I get rid of the other one? Did we put the other one? I don't see it. So I don't always use spray. Sometimes I'll just put some oil in it and rub it around, but I did say to coat the inside of my cooking spray. There we go. We've done that. All right, now it's time to place. Stuffing into the casserole dish. Uh, it smells so good already. It smells like Thanksgiving. Yeah, we used to only do stuffing on Thanksgiving, but the kids loved it so much, and I like it so much, and the wife, happy the wife, likes it so much that we've instead gone with uh, more often than that. Usually, it's when I cook the. Uh, Slow roasted chicken thighs, and I'll have the extra juices ready to go for stuffing. 
That's not do that. Oh uh, yeah, it's too bad you can't uh, don't have a smell through this video. So there's no smell. That'd be cool. You can smell the aroma of the stuffing base right now. Don't let me stuff the chicken. You can't smell anything. I don't smell the chicken cooking at all. Just the stuffing. All right, now I like to mash it down a bit. Nice and tight. Clean counters. I mean, I take any extra and put it back in. Clean our counters regularly. Yeah, this is no different from a normal day. It's not like, oh, today's special because of videoing. Let's clean everything. No, no this counter is always kept clean. After every meal, just like you'd find a restaurant. You know, you eat at the table, they clean. And the next guest, same thing. Between each meal, this counter gets wiped clean. All right, so that looks pretty good for the stuffing. We can go ahead and get this ready to wash. Soak everything that needs to get clean while well, things getting done. The blades. The bolster vegetable cover. Yep. And this part. Today, this part doesn't need a cleaning. So I set it aside. Very else is let's see. Um, foil. That's what I was going to do. Put some foil on the stuffing. So they say 40 minutes. That's the box of instructions. That it's going to take 40 minutes. To cook, I'm waiting for the uh, beep beep to tell me beep beep to tell me that the uh, oven is 400 degrees and ready, 425, and ready for stuffing. It's gonna take 40 minutes. So we look at the chicken. Chicken says it's got oh 11 minutes left, so that's 11 plus another 15 about, so it's about 25 minutes till it's ready. So we're gonna kind of slow down the chicken process a little bit. We'll see how that works. Kind of make things all happen at the same time. Right. But let's finish off the biscuits. So we have the flour, we have the um, added in the butter. There's the flour, baking soda, sugar, salt mixture. Add the flour, and then we're going to add three quarters cup of milk. Three quarter cup. Three quarters of a cup of milk. It's just an estimate. Oh, this is where I do just do the estimate. I'm going to dump it in there. Oh, what I didn't do. Oh, where's the spoon? Oh, no, you will use one of these. Oh, rolling pin, yes, thank you. Oh, it's small. There you go. There's a small one. Uh, and a small spoon to stir it up. So this one you just kind of mix it up and kind of look. It is three fourths a cup of milk. That is the recipe's amount, but sometimes I use a little more milk. And sometimes I use a little less, uh, more flour after I put in a few fourths a cup. Usually for myself, I tend to add in more, more of the uh, milk. I feel like it's not quite wet enough, the biscuits. Yeah, we're scraping all the batter, batter, all the flour off the edge as much as we can, try and waste none of that flour, let's, looking at the bottom to see how much of it is still crumbly, and see since I have a lot of still that crumble down there at the bottom, that means I'm going to add a little more milk. 
uh, made it out of the tail soon more, so. I just don't want to have the crumbling at the bottom. I want to mix all the dough. I want the dough to be nice and not crumbly. Best I can. Okay, there we go. That dough looks good. All right, time to flour the board. You're done. Flour the board to keep the board, keep the dough from sticking. Take all the dough, we're going to turn it out on the board. You have to scrape off the wooden spatula, and the rest of the dough. And the rest is all hand. Well, almost. These aren't drop biscuits. We're gonna, we're gonna use the biscuit cutter. Another shot. This one I want to get in the water quick. The flour like substance don't solidify. Yeah, not even five o'clock. Early dinner tonight. So now you're gonna see that one. You, you know, you've heard, if you heard me talk about it, the chicken is gonna be done early compared to the rest of the dishes. So we're gonna delay the chicken, and you'll see how I do that. Because you know, the stuffing's gonna need 40 minutes. You know what? Let's just go ahead and toss the stuff in. It's got the foil. It'll save it from the harassment. It already is almost 400 degrees anyway. And it goes on a lower rack. 40 minutes. Then it's going to be a, so it's a total of 40. So what it is, is it's 25 covered. Let me just do that. We'll go set start 25 minutes and 15 uncovered. So that means the chicken is going to sit in that oven a little longer. We're probably going to turn it off a little bit. Let it rest. Well, rest, not really. We'll see. Because the biscuits don't take as long. We'll get there. We'll get there. All come together. We'll see. All right. So now let's see. Uh, there is my biscuit dough ready to roll. We'll mash it together. So we're just going to smash it down. We're going to fold it. So this is kind of what creates the layers a bit when you fold it. You take the dough, you smash it, and you're going to fold it over. You're going to smash it. And you can see the flour is uh, getting eaten up by the dough. That's why I like to have this go a little wet. You know, fold it and smash it. I'll do one more folding smash. Now I'm going to roll it out to the thinness I want for my biscuits. Each person might want a different thinness for their biscuits. I have a certain thinness that I like. Oh, that was too much of a flour coating. Let's mash it a couple more times. Okay, there we go. You don't want to bite into a biscuit by tasting the flour, so I'm getting rid of the extra flowers on top. So my mom would use Bisquick, and I didn't really like the Bisquick biscuits. They weren't very good. So when I started doing this, found a recipe online, and this is based 100% the recipe I found online, too. There isn't really much difference from their recipe and what I'm doing now. Um, the main difference is probably that I uh, do not freeze the butter. That's probably the main difference. Everything else feels the same. Same measurings. I probably use a little more milk than they did in their recipe, though. It's like my business a little more, like when I roll it out, a little more doughy than crumbly. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Pretty good thickness for what we like. I think they said don't use the roller like I'm doing. Let me see where it is. No. Hmm. 
So I do have the biscuit cutter that my mom would use. This is her size biscuit cutter. So we like our business a little bigger than that. And so usually I already have it taken out. But today, when somebody put it back into the drawer, I guess they uh, put it back in. So we're just going to open this up and take out the correct size biscuit for part of that want. I think I usually use that one. So there we go. Give it back. Not when you cut your biscuit dough. Bring this part here so you can see it. Try to do it as close as I can. The first one is the best run. First run is the best run for these. I did. I actually have time. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Twenty-five. Hours. Oh, okay. I need to move this out so I can do another one. Stretch just a little. It doesn't matter that much. But yeah, this part is basically how my mom would do it. She'd take her her biscuit cutter that was much smaller. But the difference is she'd have biscuit pans. They're eight by eight biscuit pans. She would make sure all the biscuits were touching end to end. I like to keep some distance in my biscuits, but you keep them uh, end to end, make sure they touched, so that when you cook them, the inside part, that being means that uh, the bottom of it is now 425, ready for biscuit power. She would cut the biscuits and uh, make sure all the ends were touching so that they'd you know, cook, kind of like dinner rolls would cook when you do those uh, Hawaiian rolls. There you go, that you have to break apart. But her pan was four by four. Uh, eight by eight. So it's much smaller. So the yeah, I left her biscuit dough. So mash it up and do it again. All right. So didn't put didn't put any dough down there. And dough. Didn't do any flour on there. In fact, I the flour now. So just gonna get a double fold. Well, just two folds. Now this biscuit dough is kind of worked. You don't want to do too many folds. That way you're not going to get a flakiness and the, the layers. You kind of want layers. The more you work the dough, the less layers you get. But the folding, and if you have the flour in between, that's what helps get the layers. There's another technique. We have oil in between. That gives you layers. But biscuits don't use oil. We're a different kind of bread, so we're not using oil. Didn't quite do it. OK, I think I got two more. In this one, so again, I'm gonna mash it together, press it down once for a layer, fold twice. We won't really have as many layers this way. There we go. So I guess I two more. Now I'm gonna get 15 biscuits, kind of uh, less thin than usual, except that one's thicker. See, when I roll it out, I can get it much thinner than when I just uh, do them by a hand. Pressing. Fold it over once, fold it over twice. That gives you layers, a bit of layers in there. And then we're going to press it into the mold to make it more cylindrical, as much as we can. And the top won't look smooth, but that's okay. Roll it out. There we go. 15 biscuits ready to pop in the oven, but that's only when. What do we got? We've got 20 minutes. 20 minutes for those biscuits to be ready. 20 minutes for those biscuits to pop in. About 18. So what I should have done is I should have gotten the stuffing done earlier. Then that would have made it. Uh, then I could have done the biscuits. If I had gotten the stuffing done quicker, earlier, I could have also gotten the stuffing done to a particular pork part, like to sit in the casserole and waiting. Then do the chicken. That's another way to do it. But since the casserole doesn't take as long as the chicken, 
you definitely want to do the chicken first. All right, so let's put some of these things away. The last thing we're going to do is a salad. So we'll put back in that, put back in the milk. You just let the biscuits sit out, they're fine. Okay, let me see. I need some room. We're gonna use some room in that side. I don't like that side too much, but it's okay. We'll have to use that side again. Uh, so there's the biscuits ready to go. 15 wonderful biscuits ready to toast in the oven. At 425, but that's not gonna happen for another 15 minutes. That's all it's gonna take. Okay, here we go. Next item up. Is a salad. You know, it's a lot of bread, right? So we got the bread, we got the stuffing, and the biscuits, and we got the meat, the chicken, it's the vegetables. Oh, so we have celery and stuff, and that counts as vegetable? I don't know about that. I'll use some spinach. Do I want spinach? No, I have two spinach. That's what you're using. And a full salad. A full head, let's see, this one's good. Yeah, it's good. You know what? Mine, since we got some extra time, I'm gonna cut up some watermelon. Sure, how healthy wife would appreciate having some watermelon. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay. I was curious. Just making sure I'm not talking to myself. Okay, so we got the lettuce, head of lettuce. Usually I pretty much dump off the, the outer leaf. It's kind of true for almost every vegetable I prepare. The outer leaf tends to get thrown away, whether it's cabbage or lettuce or onion, any of the leafy kind of vegetables, the layered vegetables, you can just get rid of those. Maybe it's a little wasteful, but I just find that usually those ones are the ones that have, uh, have it, the refrigerator hasn't been kind to them. Unless this, this is a salad spinner, my friend. It is my best friend. My best friend. Because this is the one thing that's going to wash the lettuces and the spinach. And then it's going to help me dry them rather than using paper towels to dry the lettuce. I find that the salad spinner is the way to go. All right, so we're cutting around the core of the lettuce, if you didn't know what I was doing. I mean, there have been times when I've hand shredded lettuce and that you can do that, but it's a pain and I wouldn't recommend it. So I've cut around the core. Here we go, bye-bye core. Core is not really edible. Cut the lettuce up, depending on the size I want. There we go. And making sure, so that's where we're gonna wash it. You know? We're gonna wash it. And we see some brownish ones. You can just take those already and throw them out. So what are we doing now? We are waiting. We are waiting to see how the food comes out. Or you can also watch and see how I make lunch lettuce, dinner salad as well. That's why I'm making so much salad. And maybe I'll even show you the three boxes I'll make for tomorrow's. See, what is my lunch tomorrow? Probably not going to be chicken because I bet we're going to eat all the chicken. There will probably be some stuffing left over for tomorrow. There are definitely some biscuits left over for tomorrow. So, a solid lunch for myself tomorrow. I like solid lunches too. I can do a solid lunch for myself. 
Boom. There goes the other lettuce. Oh, let's see. That's a little brown, too brown for me. Too brown. Okay, we'll take those out. And I can continue doing that as I wash the lettuce too. More lettuce. It's not too brown. It's fine. More lettuce, more lettuce, more lettuce. All right, good, good, good. Lots of lettuce, lots of lettuce. And this is Happy Healthy Daughter's lunch in the morning, so I don't want to cut and wash lettuce every time in the morning, so I wash it the night before usually. That's too brown. And then what I'm going to do, and this is a, these things are actually usually something Happy Healthy Wife adds. The, um, well, let's see. So this one is a spring mix. So what I do is when I go to the grocery store, I look for the ones that are the freshest. This had a date of October 23rd. So that tells me it's going to be fresher. Whereas the spinach was October 22nd. So that's going to be fresh for a while. Because sometimes you'll see you go there, like when I was at the store, it's like October 15th. I'm like, oh, no, that's not going to be fresh very long. And so I don't use that. So we're going to add some more. Um, so we got the green lettuce. We're going to add some more. Got the ice for lettuce. We're going to add some more greens for a more, I, I would guess, you know, greener vegetables are probably better in general. So that's why we're adding the greens. Plus, the spring makes it taste good anyway. Add some more here. Now we're going to wash it all. See, that's looking pretty fresh. That's pretty fresh. So I'm basically just waiting for the buzzer to go off over there, and I'm getting a little salad ready, and you know, maybe some watermelon too. We gotta have watermelon. Water. Put those back in the refrigerator for next time. So let's go ahead and wash the lettuce. That's gonna take a while to fill. Then we're gonna all bring it back with this bowl. I'll have them swim across. Ah, let's just figure out which one. All right, left this one. So if you want to do it, I was listening for the sound. I don't know if you can get close to the microphone with this. So if you listen, this one's a lower pitch. It's more ripe. The higher the pitch, the less ripe. So we're going to look the more ripe one right now. And that sound tells me that the lettuce is ready to be washed. And I would bring it over there, but uh, not going to be convenient. It's water's going to spill out and all that good stuff. So I kind of, you know, mix through the lettuce, mix the water around the lettuce, break up all the iceberg lettuce so that it's more surface area because I didn't break it up earlier when I chopped it. All right, that's how it's So, that was one round. Do a second round. I always do more than one, so I'm going to do three rounds, just because I want, I want, um, I'm just thorough with the rinsing of lettuce. Just put it that way. All right, now let's go for the watermelon cutting. So I'm going to use the method. Happy Healthy Daughter recommended to me. And I've done many ways to cut watermelon. But if you look at it, you'll see they have lines inside. And that's when I cut down. So once you cut it open, you have, and these small ones are three lines. Those are the lines I'm going to cut. So I make the watermelon into sixths is what it does. So you see there's a third. Cut this one in half. I've got three thirds. Well, one sixth. But it's ready again. Rinse me. Manhandle through the water. This also helps mix it up. So that's not all spinach on the top and not all special. What was I think called spring mix? This mixes all the lettuces together. All 
right. That's pretty well good. So now this is actually a little too full, what I want to do here. A little bit, but it'll still work. So now it's all soggy lettuce. And people don't want soggy lettuce. And even if you put dressing on soggy lettuce, it's going to keep the lettuce kind of, it's going to dilute the, uh, what is that thing? The dressing you put on it. So, salad spoon. Okay, we got six minutes left over there. All right, so I spun it once. It's good to recenter the lettuce, and you can see all the water that's in the bottom there. That's a lot of water. Maybe we can. All that water. There it goes. If you want to try to dry the lettuce, I'd rather do this way than do it with paper towels. So if you eat salad a lot and you like, and if you notice it's spin is actually the fastest thing, it's a lot less, what was that? A lot less uh, water inside. Water is weight, water is heavy. So when you actually spin it, the water is a part of the weight you are spinning. And when you spin it faster, it goes, oh, this one was a little hard to cut. So now this piece is a little too small, so the taste test pretty good. Got one on there. All right, let's see. Not as much water. That's pretty good. I it's just overkill probably, but I still have to do one more. One more round of drying the lettuce. It feels pretty dry now, but. And you notice I'm making a hole for the middle so that the middle part can go in. I like that spin. But actually, it's kind of getting time for the. Uh... I'll be right back. I need a hot pad. Time for the look at the chicken. chicken. There's a little bit of oil at the bottom, but not very much. That's a little hard to see from back there. You can see the oil at the bottom of the tray. It's not enough for my stuffing. Not enough oil down there. So we're going to boost up the oven temperature. It's going to get up to 425. We're going to put this back in the oven. Brown the top. So if you look at the chicken on the top, it looks pretty good. But you'll notice it's pretty you might hear a little crispy, crunchy. A little bit right there. A little bit here. Not very crispy, crunchy. So that's where we're gonna stick it back in at a really high temperature to crisp up the top, the skin. Mm, that's gonna be good. But uh, so, but we wanted the rest of the chicken to be cooked. So that's why you slow cook it first. You're gonna cook the whole chicken. In fact, let's take a temperature check on the chicken. Just to see where we're at. You know, I cooked it longer than I usually cook it. Let's take a temperature check. Hopefully, it's tomorrow working today. Ah, no. No. I need to get more batteries. The last time this happened, I need a new battery. That's what I need to do. Okay. 
All right, let's hopefully with that it'll work. Okay, good. Okay, so I'm going to stick it in. Let's see one of the bigger ones, this one. And you're probably not going to be able to see it. Oh, it's not. The battery's too low. Usually just kind of scraping off the, there's like something on the battery. Last time that's what I did to help it work. Usually what I do is I would, uh, I wouldn't really test the chicken thinness, but, but the idea is what you do is why you cook it slow and slow so that you can, okay, okay, okay. let's see if it works. Come on, come on, baby, come on, baby. Cook low and slow, so, mm, nope, it's just not going to work. I know. We'll do this here. Take the battery out. It's like it fools it for a little bit to think it's good enough. There we go, come back in. Hold it for just a little bit. Let's see. See, it's kind of cooked in there. It's like a 126 right now, 125. So that is definitely not cooked. You know, you want 165 for chicken. So it's certainly not cooked yet. If we can trust the thermometer. So that's where we're going. But it is fairly well cooked. If I just stuck it in there at 425, you would crisp the chicken really fast. But the inside, the bone stuff wouldn't be very cooked very well. So this is why we do the uh, slow cook first, cook the inside, and then put it at the 425 mark for another, for about 15 minutes or so, basically until the top is all crispy and crunchy. And that's what we're going for. Well, I cut this water one. And when that timer goes off, it's gonna be time. You know what? Let's just get the chicken in there now. I know the top part's heating up. It's going to make it a little hotter. On the top, let's see what temperature is at. Oh, it's not even close. We'll wait a little bit. Or we could put it in the bottom rack. There we go. All right, so the bottom rack is actually already at 425. So we're going to toss the chicken down the bottom. What we're going to do is I want the juices to be on. The juices need to be on. Stuffing. Lower ovens, 425. All right, let's. So about 10 minutes, and I'll probably do it. Then I'll get enough juices out of the chicken to put on the stuffing. You know, it's time to put the biscuits in yet. I'm going to wait for the upper oven to get to 425. Plus, I already know the stuffing works, how the stuffing works. The stuffing itself is one of those things you can just kind of let sit. It's, does, it's not an exact science on the stuffing. I mean, I could take it out now. It wouldn't be done. But I, in the 40 minutes full cook, I used to cook for a full hour. They must understood the direction on the package. And it was good. You know, you didn't really know it wasn't cooked. Wasn't it was cooked too long? Couldn't really tell it was cooked too long. Yeah, I scooped it for an hour. Forty minutes covered, twenty minutes uncovered, because that's what I thought they meant. But then it said cook for forty minutes. The last fifteen minutes uncovered, which oh okay, so it only cooks forty minutes and you uncovered the last. Okay, that works too. You know, so we'll see. Again, if you missed it before, when you cut open a watermelon halfway through, you'll see three lines, three distinct lines. Those are great guide points to cut the watermelon into thirds. But nobody wants to try and cut a third, try and eat a third, a slice like a third, so then we're going to cut it half again. Makes an easy way to make sixths. And the slices become nice and manageable. Maybe a little too ripe. It's been there for a while. It's still good. Let's see what. There we go. Watermelon. So we're just sitting here trying to time things right. Oh, that's right. I can do this too. Oh, that's right. We spun it. Third trial. Spun. It's 
good. It's ready to go. Ready to go. Very little water left. And get pour my chop. Now I'm going to take this. I'll just bring them off. And use some containers. So some of these containers are actually containers of them. Um, believe it or not. Buy lunch meats. They're lunch meats. And they came in these containers. These ones. These containers. Lunch meats came in these containers. So what do I do? There's a lunch meats, wash them out. Now I have some three lunch containers. I need three for my daughter, one for me. And this is our salad lunch. Mm, I don't know if it last. Yeah, pretty good. So what I do with the Happy Healthy Daughters lunch is I add to it some um, cheese, and often Costco rotisserie chicken. So we buy the Costco rotisserie chicken breasts. So that's the kind of a lunch she gets. She loves cheese. Chicken is good too. Let's see, three nice salads. And one for daddy. And the rest we eat with dinner. And what we don't eat with dinner, that can become happy, healthy wife's lunch as well. All right, so one of these lids won't fit. I and mean, one of these uh, containers won't fit with the blue lids. Is it that one that I get right on the first shot? Let's see. Nope. It's because one of them is from State of Rose, the other three are from Mouse. Okay, that one snapped in, okay. But one of them will not fit the blue lids. So why do I have four blue lids? Because one of these containers is thrown. Okay, that's the one. Pretty sure that's the one. This one will fit, yep. Snap, 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 boom. This is the white one, boom. And one more blue lid. Here. Punch, quick and easy. Refrigerator. One thing I have noticed, I'm going to bring these ones up, because uh, I was watching another person's stream, Sam, the cooking guy, I think is his name, He's from San Diego, I believe. He has lots of good stuff. One thing he recommended was these things. I guess he had a restaurant from here called Deli's. Anyway, but we bought one Chris about a whole bunch of these containers. These have been wonderful. I have loved these containers a lot. They're awesome. Good with all your sizes. So they come in three sizes. I guess they're like the restaurant things. We've probably taken some food home before in one of these, maybe especially Chinese restaurants. I want to do them, but these are really good. These have actually stopped me from using Ziploc bags, and I rarely use Ziploc bags anymore. I still have Ziploc bags, but I mostly only use them just for uh, home stuff. I don't send food in Ziploc bags anymore because I have these containers. There's something else I need to set up for lunch. So I probably set some stuff up for lunch. We'll worry about that later. So this salad, tasty, very good. I'm going to put it on the table. That means I'm coming towards you guys. There, the salad's on the table. Salad is coming. Another great thing about these containers is that they all have one size fits all. Oh, that ding means it's time for the biscuits to go in. That's a 10 minute timer. 10 minutes, 15 for the biscuits. Let's see, we've got three right now. We'll be watching the biscuits. Making sure those biscuits get done to the right doneness for Happy Healthy Wife. She likes them specifically in a certain way. Nice and brown topped. We'll get them there. We'll get them there. It'll take 10. 
I don't open the bottom one yet because I want those uh, chicken thighs to really cook well. We got some watermelon. All right, let me do a taste test because that was one of those little, little giraffe. Let's see, let's try it. Mm. That's good watermelon. Still good. Still good. Yeah, the two smalls from Costco. We've lived off this for a while. I know that it's um, getting close to winter. So we're not going to get as many of these anymore. I didn't get any last time with the Costco. Because, again, it's getting close to winter. And in winter, it's a summer fruit, as you know. So the winter fruit is not there. Okay, so we got this. Can I fit them all in? We'll see. Let's look at the time. What are we doing with time? Oh, yeah, it's 510. Oh, how wonderful. It means, you know, I got another. Well, until that's done, and then we can have an early dinner. Isn't that wonderful? Mm, early dinner. Yeah, that makes the wife happy to do early. Okay, so this is the watermelon bowl. It means you taste it, cut it up, easy to slice, one whole watermelon. Doesn't take very long. Just gonna set that on the table. So if you didn't figure it out yet. The uh, dining table, not dining, the, uh, it's actually the breakfast table that we use for dining. Anyway, that's where the camera is sitting. So that's why things go over there. Okay, so let's see. Let's take a quick look at the chicken. Now that we're ready for it. See if it has the juices we want. Okay. Yep. Uh, so let me get this ready for both. So we're going to bring out the chicken. And I'm going to show you the magic of how to do stuffing as if it tasted like you cooked it in the bird. Maybe your family is different. My family prefers stuffing that was in the bird. Okay. So here we have our chicken thighs. Let's see how crispy those are. Okay, hold on. See that crispy? They're pretty close to being done. They're fairly close. The browning's almost there. I hear ya. Offset start, how about? Another 10 for the biscuits. All right, and here is the stuffing. Looking pretty good. But you know what it needs? It needs some flavor as if it was in the bird. So what are we going to do? Now, often though, I'm usually cooking like eight of these chicken thighs, which means I'll have a lot more juice than what I have today. But I look for the, okay, this is the one. This is the corner. The corner where the uh, will work the best to actually pour it on. So you're gonna take all the juice from the thighs and work its way down to that corner. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Try and get as much down there as I can. Now that it's there, we're gonna just pour it onto the stuffing. I try and spread out evenly over all the stuffing. I know it's gonna soak through the stuffing, soak down into it, as it does. Oh, that thigh almost escaped. But there it is. Now you have the chicken juices as if. The stuffing was in the bird. Okay. Let's all the chicken thighs. I mean, the crispy is crispy is there. 
going to have to wing it. Pun intended. On this uh, thermometer. I see the thermometer's having trouble. I think it gets closed. Just making sure the oven is closed. All right, so that's... Okay, it's going to turn off by now. I'm going to stick it in the bird right now. Can stick it in. So I just want to double check. See how done it is. I'm going to put in the battery. There it goes. 143. So the core is not quite done. Let's try this one. One forty, one thirty. Okay, that's not in the bird. I can tell. But you put it right next to the bone, right next to the bone. That's right, this thing is not hot, that hot, so I can actually touch it. There it is, a one eighty two, one eighty three, one eighty four. This one seems pretty done. Look at this one. Oh, I felt the bone there. What temperature are you? One seventy three. So you see, this one is probably mostly done. It's just this big one here, huh? Where's the one? There's the one for this one. Right under the bone. 180, yeah. So these three are done. Just this one. I can put this one back in a little bit. He's kind of a bigger fella anyway. That part of that 140, yeah, 140s. Okay. So he is a bigger fella. He's not done yet. The other three are done. We can take those out. And we can put this in. And this works pretty well. Okay, I need the things. We'll get the things. Okay. So this for another to crisp up the top, because some people like a crispy, crunchy topping coating for their stuffing. We're going to put it in for another 10, 15 minutes. And then the stuffing will be done. All right, we got five minutes left in the business. I'm taking the business quick. Oh, they're getting there. They're getting there. We're signing around the top. Chicken, let me see. Where's my tongers? All right. Chicken. Chicken, chicken. Remember, hear that? Let's see if you can hear it. Crispy skin. This one's crispy. Just the inside needs more cooking. So we're gonna put it back in the oven. To cook longer. On the lower rack, so the skin doesn't crisp up too much. Biscuits are almost there. Four minutes is going to be too long. But that's okay. So you might wonder. I'll put the chicken right there. There's the chicken. I forgot what you might wonder. Oh, you might wonder why I put it in the top of it. Because the temperature is now the same. 425 in both. And the top oven is just a better oven. That's just why it is. Plus, I put it underneath the biscuit tray which will keep the uh, chicken from crisping as much. If you haven't ever noticed, you put two things in the oven, the top one's gonna brown faster than the bottom one. One, the top one's higher in the oven, at least in my electric ovens, the top one's higher in the oven. Two, the coils on the top of the oven turn on and off, and those create the heatness and the browning on the top layer more than the bottom layer. Let's take a look at this. Nope, not quite, almost there. And I keep opening, I keep losing, I know, I keep losing the heat that's inside. It takes longer and whatnot, but oh well. There it goes. Let's see. While we're uh, waiting, let's see. So I'm going to set up. So one other thing, if you've ever seen my other videos, and probably some of you have, I usually set up a picture that I use for the video so that you can see what the food's going to look like. And today, 
you'll get to kind of see how I set them. Let me see. We're going to have chicken and so I want one of these with the edge. Oops, the white. We're going to want full color. Now we're going to have to split it. This will be fine. You won't be able to see it fully. You can, well, I'll take a picture over here and show you kind of what I do. But then, um, let's see. So this chicken's one is going to face the camera. This side should face the camera. Um, I want the chicken the focal point. So I'm trying to think about how the thumbnail is going to set up. If the chicken's the focal point, then that means the front stuff will be blurry. So let's instead kind of the chicken forward. Kind of got to clean the plate. You see, you also use some magic here too. You got to clean the plate too. So the chicken forward, that's good. Oh, that chicken looks pretty good like that. And then so we're going to have a salad. Oh, I should add some watermelon too because it's a watermelon day too. Um, so I need the salad. Maybe I'll put some dressing on the salad. I like Thousand Island. You might like your own dressing, but I love Thousand Island. So we got the chicken here. We're going to put the biscuits. I think salad will go here. Stuff. Being, do you think I need color? Salad, watermelon, because the biscuits and the stuff can be kind of same color, same color as the chicken. We want to multicolor this thing, so I need to have some green salad on one side, some watermelon on the other side, maybe stuffing and a biscuit. Yeah, stuffing here, biscuit here. Don't want the watermelon here, the salad, the watermelon or salad here. Let me see, I'm thinking of the way you're looking at it. Let me do it the way that I'm going to look on the thumbnail. So we can do the salad. Salad on the right, arm on the left. It's a whole side. The biscuit will be on this side. Stuff will be there. Okay, while I'm on the side, it's not gonna matter. Honestly, that won't matter. So let's kind of get this thing started, get ready. I haven't used these in a while. Yes, I do have salad tongs. But usually what I'm doing instead, we're using our hands because it's more family. Why do we need to be dirty another set of these right here? And I want some colored ones as well. Okay, let me see. Oh, that's gonna be good. That's gonna be good. Colored ones as well. Yeah. That's gonna look good. Uh, I should show you what I'm doing, but I'm just manhandling the lettuce. That's what I'm doing. So yeah, so actually those pictures you see, you know, it is it is exactly, as you can see, it is the food that I've cooked. There's no secret about that. It's just the food that I've cooked. But I do present it. You know how they always do that presentation thing. You want to find the best pieces. So usually what you're going to see is my best piece of chicken, which is what I chose for this one. And you're going to get the best looking. That's not going to be the best tasting. That doesn't mean it's going to be the best tasting. It will be the best looking piece. Let me take the watermelon like this. Okay. Oh, the fish is probably already too done. Let's take them out. Another five or so. Okay. Ooh. Okay. All right. So the biscuits. Oh, actually, they look beautiful. They do look beautiful. They are very beautiful. I'm going to choose one of the best ones to put on the plate. Ooh, this one's really good. This one's really good. These are definitely my wife, Happy Healthy Wife's Doneness. She loves in this done. This is perfect for her. So let's see. The biscuit. I think the biscuit should be on. Now, if I was actually making a real meal, you'd have the stuffing next to the bird. So I might do that instead and put the biscuit there. Okay, 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 okay. Let me see. How am I going to do the watermelon slice? I think you like one more slice of watermelon, maybe. Let's see. Hold on. One more slice. And I'll bring it up for you. All right. So there's. This is what we have. This is going to be the thumbnail. This is going to be the thumbnail. So you can see the biscuit looks very good. It's not too hot to handle. But this is the kind of. This is the kind of baking. Top coating that my wife really likes. You can see how crunchy it looks. The bottom looks good too. Nice brown. But you can see it's a little bit flaky on the side. If you've ever seen the picture I did, uh, I don't know if it's out yet or it's 
I did do a biscuit episode, and if you've seen the side of the biscuit plate biscuits, it looks really good. So again, it's like it's all about design. How to design the best way to look. So let's see, I've got some different colored greens up here, and that's good for the salad. Yeah. That salad is looking good. We got a chicken just we got stock and hash potatoes. You know, the stuffing and stuff. It's gonna send this plate, and that'll be our meal. That'll look good. And don't worry, after I take the picture. I will give the taste for you, the taste test. I'll put other needs to be off. I'm going to check on the last chicken. That's what we're going to do. And honestly, even though it's reading low, I'm going to tell you honestly. Um, so what's going on with it? Just the part next to the bone is probably not fully cooked. There's no real juices coming out anymore. We are going to, oh, it's still on this time. All right, so let's go ahead and stick this in next to the bone again. Just double check. This is how I do my chicken. You know, I don't want raw chicken to come out, so I always like to check it. 161, oh, it's really close. If you don't know, the, the thermometer meat for chicken is 165. That's, uh, ooh, less. So this one's a great candidate for later for leftovers, and it could be the one that gets microwaved because that's going to cook the inside. But we're still going to put it on the plate. And of course, you tell them. And you know what? I can eat this one, honestly. I might eat this one instead. doesn't matter that much to me. You just avoid all the part that's too red. I think it's gone. Oh, I turned it off. That's why. Yeah, see, there's 169, so it's fairly close. It's just a little underdone near the uh, near the bone. It's also the biggest one, so it's not one either my wife or daughter are going to go after. And if they do, I will swap their hand and say, nope, that was not quite done. But it's a great candidate for the microwave to finish it up. If you're actually serving this at a dinner party. Since it's not, don't worry about that. Uh, the biscuits, we're just going to put the biscuits on this tray and put it on the table because one less dish to wash. The chicken, I usually don't. It's hard to put the, I sometimes put the chicken tray down too. But uh, for the biscuits, yeah, I'm just going to put it on the table. Oh, if you want to see all the biscuits, then I only showed you one. There you go. I know it's not always been very long. Sorry about that. But here's all the biscuits. You can see all nicely browned. Beautiful. Thought I might have wanted a little less brown, but we'll see how they taste. So put that there. I'm just missing the stuffing. So stuffing is probably pretty much done. Take this out of the way. So I can bring out the stuffing. Uh, chicken. Chicken is on the table too. Well, I was carrying the knife, huh? Mm. Should be good. I right, said so the stuffing has lots of leeway on doneness and not whatnot. Uh, there we go. Okay, we'll bring it up so you can see the stuffing fully close. There it is. This is the stuffing. It's a little hot. Can't hold here forever. But there it is, it's nice. You see a nice little top coating, a little brownness on that top coating. So this is the last piece of the puzzle. And so sometimes, you know when I'm doing my dishes, I'll just, I think I do need a picture of stuffing. I have a bad picture of stuffing on my current thumbnail for the uh, stuffing, tastes like in the bird stuffing video. So sometimes I redo them. And so, that, uh, so you can get to see how I do a thumbnail. Now, because the light's coming from the camera side, uh, you're gonna have you're gonna see my back towards it. So I'll be on the other side taking the picture. Oh, maybe not. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Because it's over here. I didn't have the card in the camera right now because the camera card is over here. Just undo that. There we go. There we go. 
and then you probably die in the sea. It tastes more hearing me how it tastes. So here's my camera that I use. I use a flash. So I got the flash going, and this is the camera that I use to take the pictures for the new ones. Excuse me while I get in your way. All right, so now, the other thing is I wanted to clear stuff out of the way. Usually I like a nice black. So I usually use it on the, if you, it's the, dining, the table we eat at. It actually has a black table. So it's usually better. I want to hide the purple. I can see the purple. I'm going to move it forward. Hide the purple. There we go. Beautiful. All right. So that, make sure I focus on the dish itself. There we go. So then we get the nice little picture of it, and then I dress it up, and that's the thumbnail picture. You might wonder what I use. Actually, I use uh, GIMP. GIMP is a free software. I do a little image editing, very little, because this camera takes such good pictures. I don't have to do much editing, because I also have the white lights, and it's got a bounce flash. It puts the light perfectly, so you don't have to do that much editing. But when I use my cell phone camera, I'll just be honest, it doesn't do a very good job color-wise. Um, so I, you know, I'm always worried about like the video color quality. This is the greatest quality for what I can tell and what I see. Um, it's not the greatest quality on color. At least that's when I edit the videos when I see. So let's finish up the plate. Let's see. Um, the serving, this we use this one. Oh, I so much love the wooden serving spoon that was given to me. They are wonderful. They are they are nice. Oh, you can see it goes right through it nicely. Not that the serving spoon does that, but that the dish is kind of way it's coming off. That a little spray of oil plus the extra oil we added. Okay, I'm gonna get a good looking one. So we have whoops, that is hot, extremely hot. Uh, it's a salvageable. Trust me, this is how I can make this look really good for a picture. Uh, yeah, it's got the stuffing. I know it looks a lot as the same color as the bird, which is kind of white, but so does the biscuit. But, you know, this is kind of how Thanksgiving meals work anyway. How chicken and stuffing and biscuits work. Yeah, you saw my stick piece. Mm, it does have the crunch. All right. So, see that? You saw that thumbnail for the live stream. It was nice thumbnail. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that thumbnail. I think it came out well. You know, I faded in a picture I had for biscuits with the picture I had for chicken. Those are the two things I had, but I didn't have a good, I would have faded it. I would have added the stuffing, but I didn't have a good picture of the stuff. That's why you didn't get a picture of the stuffing for today's meal. And the watermelon was just in throw on. I just, I just threw on the watermelon today. I saw we had some extra time. Now about 5.30, perfect, about two hours in the stream, and we are done. I know it took two hours to cook the meal. Two hours, yes. But as you can see, I'm gonna bring it up again. Not everything is there. You know, usually um, I don't spend the whole two hours cooking necessarily, but partly because I'm on stream, I'm taking a little more time than I would. I might have a little more time on myself than other things. But let's see, you can see the stuffing looks really nice here. Got the chicken. Gonna make an excellent thumbnail. So I'm gonna change whatever thumbnail I have now with this one eventually. Yeah, and you got the chicken, it looks beautiful. So now let's take the picture. See how beautiful it looks. I wasn't sure the other snack stuff I said, but we're pretty much uh, finished with the meal. And I'm sure they're hungry. Found this hungry and wants to eat. So let's take a look. Make sure you focus on the chicken. All right, I didn't center the dish very well, so let's center it this time. Now, so this time it's going to have a white background. You know, you've probably seen one of these pictures of black backgrounds. It's okay. It'll work out well. I'll do all the, I do a little bit of editing to it. I make it more contrasty, make it more beautiful make it more appealing. Um, I use a focus blur. And if the focus blur is gonna catch your eye right here, probably gonna put your eye right here and the rest will be kind of a little faded. 
so it'll make it a little beautiful picture. You wondering how those pictures happen? If you ever follow the uh, pictures that I, well, you start this way. If you ever follow the pictures that I do on the uh, the community tab, if you ever see those in your feed, that's how I do it. That's how it works. I set up a beautiful plate. I take a picture, and then I do very little touch up. Don't need much touch up because I have a great camera. And great lighting, that's part of it too. The lighting system I have here is really good. And it's not the, I do have some outdoor lighting, but it's mostly these big lights that you can't see. That makes it nice. All right, so now I didn't put any dressing on the salad for my picture. I think that should be fine. No dressing on the picture, that's fine. Do we need dressing? No. I, hmm. I don't think so. Besides, we didn't put dress on the salad. All right, it's everybody eats their own. Wife, happy, healthy wife, happy, healthy daughter, they do not do salad dressing on their salads. So it's fine to leave it off. The rice, I already seen tries to warm one. It's good to warm one. But let's put some dressing on the salad. You know, you probably don't need to see me eat the salad, honestly. Because you, you kind of know what salad tastes like. It's, there's nothing special. It's just iceberg lettuce plus a spring mix. Any standard salad. So let's, let's go in the order that you might want. I'm not sure what order you want. We're going to start with... Start with the biscuit. So I'm going biscuits, just straight up eat them. Let's see, flaky, look at that, separate, kind of layered separation. Nice to put butter on it if you want a butter or honey. Happy other waffle are like honey on it. I do not care for honey. But so let's just taste the biscuit, shall we? Hmm. It does have that crust, that crunch a little bit, a little firm on the crust. It's nice, it's kind of um, airy, very biscuity. Maybe I fold it a little too much because it doesn't have as much layers as I would have liked. The more you mess with the dough, the less layers you're gonna get when you actually get baking. Mm. But otherwise, yeah, that's a, it's a good biscuit. It's not very greasy, unlike a Kentucky Fried Chicken biscuit, which is really greasy. You know, light, airy, flavorful. And very good bread. Let's go for stuffing. Oh, you can, let's see. Hear that crust? A little bit of crust on the stuffing as we cooked it that way. All right. We cooked it in the oven. Um, the foil off. If you don't want any crust on your stuffing, put the foil on. Keep the foil on. It won't crust up. Most of the rest of the stuffing is very um, non-crusty. Just that top layer got the crust. And a very, very thin layer of crust, too. Let's try this stuff. Still very hot. Mm. Now, if you had told me, oh, yeah, the Covington does a great job on the flavors. Also, if you ever do the croutons from the store, do Covington's, especially the, the Caesar salad version, those are really good ones. Those are the ones that I really like. Try a little bit. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's some of the really softness. You can taste this very juicy, very um, juicy from the chicken juice. You can still get that chicken juice flavor in there. Uh, it's got the crust, the crispiness. Um, the, the top layer, if you like that. But inside is very soft and chewy, like you know what you have in them. A soft bread. So yes, that, that is a very good way to do stuffing. Honestly, though, for the one that I did, if you do it the same way, that's good. But I hope you have more chicken thighs and more oil. You see, I tried the best I could to put oil in there, but this could have used more chicken oil. Or you could have had half as much stuffing, but then you have only half the bag. And the harder. And then with these chicken thighs. But um, yeah, the oil could have used a little more chicken juice, honestly, but it's still an extra good compared to without the chicken juice. And that chicken, the chicken juice, it's definitely worth it. Now, normally I would use this with my hands here, 
But since we're on the screen, let's go ahead and cut into it. You can hear the crunch. Open up the chicken thigh. Where's that bone? Where's that bone? Where's that bone? There's the bone. Okay, we'll avoid the bone. It's on the chicken thigh. Make sure you get the skin. The skin is the crispy part. All right, so if you take a look at it, let me see. Let me bring this part up to the camera so you can see it before I taste it. I mean, you've seen everything else. You didn't see this cut open, that's why. All right, up higher. All right, come on, focus camera, focus, focus, focus. There we go. So you can see in here, this is chicken, it's all completely done. It is definitely done. The other one probably is pretty well done, but tomorrow I'm going to be low. I'm going to say the other one's probably really done too. Not much juice is left. We drain them all out. Most of the juice is not less. You can see a little bit of juice. It's also fine, so I'm not going to worry about being dry. But you can... I'm going to get to the microphone part so you can hear the crust. Can you hear the crispiness? Yeah, crispiness. Okay. Let's go with the crispiness part. And we'll cut that part off. Get that crispiness. I definitely want the skin on this. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. I like the salt flavor and the pepper. You can't really notice the pepper much, but the salt is good. Um, the crispiness of the skin is there. It might be a little drier than I usually cook. So, um, you know, the recipe is 45 minutes at 300 degrees plus an extra, um, how much time was it supposed to be? An extra 15. Well, actually, the real recipe says 30 to 45 at, three, four, uh, at 425. Don't do that high for that long. It dries it out. Um, so I actually do it for about 15 minutes or until the, the top looks brown as it is. So that's really where it was. Today, it may be a little drier than what I'm used to, but it's still good chicken. It's tender. Very flavorful with the crispy skin. Couldn't want much more than that. Mm -hmm. I thank you all for hanging out with me for the past two hours. If those of you stayed for the whole stream, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed watching me spend my two hours in a sunny afternoon cooking. This is kind of what I do on sunny afternoon, although it's not always two hours, but it could be two hours. It just depends on what we're cooking. Maybe next time I'll cook pizza because other people want to see pizza. So I just want to say thank you for watching. And if you're going to check the VOD, you can say if you missed any part, you can always rewind, see what you missed. If you just now got here, you can rewind the whole thing, see everything else. And I will see you guys in the next video.